Today we're going to be working on a Biostar MB8500 TVX motherboard. It is a socket 7 board based on the Intel 430VX chipset. And specifically, we're going to be replacing this Dallas RTC module. These modules provide a real-time clock or RTC for date and time functions for the motherboard, as well as a battery backup for the BIOS settings stored in CMOS. And RTC modules like this one consist of the real-time clock I see, a crystal, and a lithium battery. The batteries can last over a decade or more, but they all eventually fail, which leaves the motherboard unable to retain the settings stored in CMOS, like what we're seeing here. And this is actually a very common issue on motherboards that use these modules. And we've replaced similar modules on other systems that we've restored. However, something neat about this particular motherboard is that the board is actually designed to use a standard coin cell battery along with an external crystal. With those parts installed, the RTC module would no longer need an internal battery. Dallas actually makes a version with just the RTC functionality and no internal battery or crystal called the DS12885, which is pin compatible with the original DS12887. There are great aftermarket modules available like this one, which are drop-in replacements for the Dallas modules, and they do work great, but we're going to try utilizing the empty component locations instead for a more factory installed look. And to ensure everything will work properly, we can use a multimeter and make sure we have continuity where we expect. We should have continuity between the positive pin here of what will be the coin cell battery to pin 20 on the DS12885, which is the battery input pin. And we do, so that means the external battery will work. Next, we need to make sure we have continuity between the pads for the external crystal and pins two and three on the DS12885. And we do, so we've confirmed that our plan should work. The next step is to locate the components that we need, which include the CR2032 coin cell holder, a surface mount ceramic capacitor, which we'll get to shortly, a crystal, and the DS12885. Selecting the coin cell holder is relatively easy as we just need to find a holder that matches the footprint and pad spacing on the board. And a quick check of this datasheet confirms this one should work. Along with the battery, we need a surface mount ceramic capacitor to essentially act as a voltage stabilizer for the battery voltage. And that's because the RTC current draw could cause the battery voltage to sag and the capacitor will help maintain a steady voltage to the RTC. And luckily, we already have plenty of these in the workshop, so we can just yoink one from here. And the last component we need to find is a crystal. If we take a look at the DS12885 datasheet, they specify exactly what type we need. A 32.768 kHz frequency along with a 6 picofarad load capacitance. Plugging those values in, we find one, and that should be it. And with everything in hand, we can begin preparing the board. We first desoldered and removed the DS12887. And now we're using solder wick to clean up the pads we need to install the new components through. Next, we'll install the ceramic decoupling cap. And then the crystal goes in next. The battery holder goes in with the help of some tape to keep it in place while soldering. And lastly, the DS12885 and soldering all 24 pins. With that done, let's get it set up on the bench and powered up.
Oops, I uh, forgot to put the battery in. This looks better even though we do have a couple of errors. We'll go into the BIOS settings and input the correct date and time. Let's reboot and see if we have success. We can now get through post with no CMOS errors into a boot attempt. So that means our work is done. Thanks for watching the parallel port and we'll see you next time.